Hi guys, my name's Andy Crowley. Thank you for joining me for day one of this 10 day guitar challenge where we're gonna play guitar for 10 minutes a day for 10 days. This day one is my absolute beginner's first lesson. So if you were taking a one-to-one -one, uh, private lesson with me and you'd never even held a guitar before or you tried a few bits in the past but it was a long time ago, then this is the guitar lesson that I would be showing you. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to play the easiest two chords on guitar and then get you playing your first song by the end of this video in under 10 minutes. So if you've never even played a song before, this is the ideal place to start and let's get you straight in for a close up and learn how to play these two easy chords. So the first chord we're going to be learning is the E major chord, also known as an E chord, and this is where we need to place our fingers to be able to play it. Now, if your guitar isn't in tune, it doesn't really matter where you put your fingers on the guitar, it's not going to sound right. There is a video of mine in the description below where you'll find a video showing you exactly how to tune your guitar with and without a guitar tuner. So check out that video first if you suspect that something isn't sounding right here, but I'm gonna talk you through a couple of other bits of the guitar before we get fully started. So these metal strips going down the guitar here are your frets and going across are the strings. We number the strings thinnest to thickest, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and each fret, it's the area between the metal strips that we'd call fret one, fret two, and fret three. Anytime we place a finger on a fret, we really want it to be to this side of the fret, so the side nearest to you, up against the metal strip, but not on it. So if I wanted to place my finger on first finger, first fret, it would be placed here, rather than in the middle, and we also wanna be right on the tip of your finger, like this. For this first chord, the E major chord, we need that first finger to be on the third string, at that first fret. So that's just here, right on the tip of our finger, and we are pressing between our thumb and first finger. My thumb is directly behind where my first finger is on the guitar, just here. The middle finger needs to be at the second fret of the fifth string, so string five, one, two, three, four, five. And the third finger, otherwise known as the ring finger, goes here directly underneath at the same fret on the string below. So just one recap, these fingers are placed finger number one or the index finger, middle finger, and the third finger here. The little finger, it's best to keep it as close to the third finger as possible rather than shooting off and doing its own thing. This is where we want to place it here. For this particular chord, we do want to strum all six strings and make sure that they're all heard. So let's do that now and strum our E major chord. Now that sounds like it should sound and hopefully yours sounds the same. If not, your guitar may be out of tune, so check out that tuning video. However, we also want to make sure that all six strings are ringing out, by which we want to pick the thickest to the thinnest string, so string six to one. And if they all sound like that, then we're doing it correctly. Possibly one of the strings sounds a little bit like this. We get a little bit of either buzzing or it's not ringing out at all like this. There are two common reasons that that can be the case. The first thing is you need to be at this side of the fret, as I said at the start of the video. If they're in the middle of the fret, that may not ring out. They all want to be at this side of the fret not at the far side. And then each finger also needs to be right on the tip, not flat. Now this is common because whenever we hold things, say if I was just holding this guitar neck to pick it up, we'd grip it like this. But this is not how we press down notes on a stringed instrument. We need to be right on the tips of our fingers and make sure that this joint in our fingers is bent and kind of curled over so that each tip of the finger is at 90 degrees to the fret. And when those two things are the case, when we're at this side of the fret and on the tips of our fingers, it's just a case of getting that right amount of pressure down 
but with the right finger placement, it may be a little bit less than, than you think. Now, even I, at this point, have some lines on the end of my fingers. This is normal. We do have to press down you know, a decent amount to get the note ringing out, but try not to press down any more than you need to. Try and find that sweet spot. The second chord we're gonna cover in this video is the A major chord. And with this chord, we can play any one of 10 songs. As I say, there'll be a song at the end of this particular video, but there are a number of songs, 10 songs, that are played only using these two chords on my website, and the link to that is also in the description. So to play the A major chord, it's best to start off on the E major chord that we already know. Now we need to keep this first finger down, but lift the other two away. And this is really important. This is gonna be our anchor finger, because when we're learning chords, the hard thing isn't necessarily playing one chord, it's the change between. So what we're gonna do is keep this first finger down, but slide it over to the second fret. And this time we wanna be around in the middle of the fret, because we're gonna place the middle finger above it, at that same second fret and the third finger directly below it. And this is the A major chord. You may have seen this chord played like this. However, if this is the first time you've ever picked up a guitar before, it's going to be incredibly difficult to change between any chords and these included. So we're making this as easy as possible by keeping contact with the fretboard at all times and using that first finger as an anchor point. So this is the A major chord that we're going for. Let's uh, place this first finger at the third string, second fret, one, two. Middle finger goes directly above it and third finger below it. And it's best to keep that first finger around in the middle of the fret this time, and this time only really, so that we can fit the other two in. And with this particular chord, we want to strum from string five. And this is what the A major chord should sound like. To check that all those strings are ringing out, we want to pick again from the thickest to the thinnest, but we're gonna start from string five. There is more opportunity for strings not ringing out on this one, so again, try and get them as far to, towards you as possible, and keep right on the tips. That is the best way to get them ringing out, but you may have to press on just a little bit harder on this chord to get those strings ringing out. One more time, strum. Pick each string. And strum. So to change between those chords, we need to keep that first finger down at all times and change between them. So if we go back to the E major chord now, and just give it one single strum of all six strings, we keep the first finger down, slide to the second fret, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum. And then to change back, the first finger stays down, slide it back to that first fret, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum. Again, so we're on that first chord that we looked at now, the E chord. So we keep the first finger down, we slide it to the second fret for the second chord that we looked at, Middle finger above, third finger below, and strum. Try and strum from the fifth string, so missing out the thickest string. But if you do accidentally catch that thickest string, it's okay for now. We're just learning. First finger stays down, we move back to the first fret for our first chord, which is the E major. And strum, and that's our E major. Now you may wish to pause the video here so that you can have a little bit longer practice between those two chords, changing between the E and the A chord. Remember to keep your first finger down at all times. And the first chord we looked at has your first finger on the first fret. And then chord number two, the A chord, first finger, second fret, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum. And you're wanting your fingers to take around a second to go to each chord to move on to the second part, which is basically going straight for our first song, which is a song called For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. This song has just these two chords and we have to play each chord for a bar of each. To do this, we need to understand about bars and beats. The beat is whatever you would nod your head to when your favorite song comes on. So when you kind of 
grooving along to a song and tapping your foot and enjoying it, you're tapping your feet or nodding your head to the beat. This is an even pulse throughout the song and it generally goes to a count of four. So an even count of one, two, three, four, and that is repeated throughout an entire song evenly. It's that count of four that we call a bar. So the simplest strumming pattern we can do for any song is just strumming on the beat and we're going to strum each chord in this particular song four times. So we strum the E chord four times. One, two, three, four. And keep that first finger down when we're going to change to the second chord, which is the A chord. And then strum this four times. One, two, three, four. And then we need to change back to the E chord and do this in a loop for around a minute. And if you've never heard that particular song that we're going for, the link is in the description to a YouTube video of the song so you can have a quick listen to it to hear what we're going for. And you should pretty distinctly hear this uh, rhythm guitar part throughout the entire song. Now keeping the strumming hand going while changing chord is undoubtedly the trickiest part of learning songs on guitar. However, this anchor finger, keeping the first finger down, makes it a much easier task and helps us going forward to learn the other chords that we're going to be learning in the coming days. So drilling this change is so important rather than learning more chords. So many beginners get a book full of 10 chords or 100 chords and try and learn them, but it's mastering the change between them that's going to get you the end goal of being able to play real songs as soon as possible. And hopefully this will be one that you can play just in a few minutes now by following me. So let's start with the E major chord, the first chord we covered in this video. And we're going to strum this four times and soon as we've done that, we want as soon as we strum that fourth strum, we want to change immediately to the A chord as swiftly as possible. Now, if this takes a few attempts, and that is totally fine because this is the end goal of this first video, of this day one of this 10-day guitar course. So if it's a little struggle at first, that's understandable because it might be the first thing that you've ever done. Go easy on yourself, allow this trickiest part of this, the chord changes, to bed in and for you to get used to them before you put too much pressure on yourself. So let's play along together really slowly now and let's have a go at playing our first song for what it's worth by Buffalo Springfield. So we get ready on our E chord, we press down and we begin strumming in two, three, four. One, two, three. Three, four, then change to the A chord and begin strumming again. One, two, three, back to the E, changing back, and one, two, three, four. First finger stays down, we change to the A. One, two, three, four, and pause there. So now's the time to take stock with how you're doing. If you need to pause the video just briefly one time again to just do some individual changes which will drill that change a little more often to help you get used to it more. Maybe take a quick break to rest your fingers a little bit because you might have big lines and they might be quite sore. That's understandable and totally normal in the beginning. And when you feel up to it, play this video from this point one more time. And this time, we're going to try and get those spaces between the chord changes as, as quick as possible. And the goal is just to keep our right hand strumming evenly. No matter what chord we're playing, or whether there's a change or not, we're just going to try and keep this chord hand strumming, okay? So from the E chord, play along with me one last time in one, two, three, four. E, two, three, then to A. A, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. And A, two, three, four. Last time from the E, E, two, three, 
four and A. Two, three, finish on E, E. And that's how to play our first song, and that is the end of day one of this 10-day guitar challenge. So thank you very much for making it this far. Your homework now. Hi guys, my name's Andy, and welcome to day two of my 10-day guitar starter course, where I'm encouraging absolute beginners to play guitar for 10 minutes a day for 10 days. This is the challenge, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you our next chord, which is the D major chord, and we're going to be learning how to play the chords and the melody, the main riff and hook, to the song Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Super recognisable, super great, and to do this, we're going to need to learn the D chord, and the only two chords that happen in the whole song are the A chord and the D chord, and we also have a little easy melody, as I say. Let's get straight up for a close-up now on these two easy chords. So as a reminder, this is how to play the A chord from the previous lesson. We have our first finger on string 3, fret 2, this is fret 1, this would be fret 2, and we place our middle finger above and our third finger below. An A chord can also be played like this, but I'm encouraging you to play it like this because the first chord we learnt was the E and we can go between the two chords like this and then this chord that we're learning in this video, the new one in this 10 day course, is the D chord which we play like this. So to play each one of these chords we never actually have to lift off that first finger and therefore it's a lot easier because the harder thing about these chords are the changes. So when you're changing between the chord, the worst thing that can happen is you lift all your fingers off and you don't know where to put them. With one finger down, that tends to be a lot better. So we know this A major chord. If you don't, check out day one of this 10 day course. And we're going to learn now this new D major chord where our first finger is in the same place but we move it to this side. Our middle finger, or finger two, goes second fret on the thinnest string, so like this. Notice straight away my fingers are on a little bit of an angle to get them as far to this side of the fret area, which is this area here. Get it as far this way as possible. And then our third finger goes here to make a triangle shape. The little finger doesn't need to be down, but we're just gonna put that right next to the third finger like this. So a recap between all those finger positions, finger one, finger two, and finger three, and they're all on an angle pointing towards your strumming hand shoulder. The thumb can be a little bit higher on this chord, but we're not going to use it to mute any strings kind of like this just yet, though we can use it to mute the thickest one like this. The real thing we want to focus on with this D chord is getting the thinnest four strings to ring out. So this one we strum from string four, which is the D string. Our thickest strings are E, A and D, which are the three chords we've learned. This one's the D, so we strum from the D and play the thinnest strings and press down like this. And that's what our D chord should sound like. To play Born in the USA, along with lots of other songs that use these two chords, we'll just need to change between the A and the D. When we're doing that, we need to keep this first finger down, because that's the advantage of playing this A. So we go back to this A chord, middle finger above, third finger below the string that our first finger is on. Keep that first finger down, lift the other two off, and play the D chord that we've just learned. One, two, three, and strum. It's always a good idea to pick each individual string from string four. Four, three, two, one. And if they're not ringing out, we need to be more on the tips of our fingers and have them all at this side. And with the D chord, we tend not to have to press on as hard, but you may, if you still are with good positioning, still getting this sound where things aren't ringing out, you just need to press down that little bit harder, but not too hard so that you're getting two big lines in your fingers. The small lines in your fingers like this are always unavoidable. So let's just practice this change between A and D a few more times, and then we're gonna go for our second song in day two of this 10-day guitar course, Born in the USA. 
So here is our A chord again, we give it a strum. We keep the first finger down, middle finger below, third finger on the third fret, so a little bit more of a stretch, which is where not being straight with the frets, we want to be on an angle with our thumb just, just creeping over the top. That makes this D chord a lot more comfortable. We keep the first finger down, we lift the other two off, and go above on, and below. First finger stays down, slide it to the good side of the fret, second finger, third finger, and strum from string four. Back to the first finger, slide it back a touch, middle finger above and below. If you feel that is too tough for you at the moment, please don't give up. Please check out day one of this 10 day course where we'll cover two even easier chords and an easier change. So to play Born in the USA in the original key, sort of along to the record, we need something called a capo placed at second fret. For more info about a capo, there's a link in the description to sort of tell you about my recommendations for them because they are really useful to play songs, especially playing along to the record. And and they do only cost, you know, a few pounds or a few dollars, so they're well worthy of an investment, as is a guitar pick. Everything you'll see me playing in this 10-day course, I use a guitar pick. This is my own brand, it's an Andy guitar pick, available on my website, so if you want my recommended one, check that out. But we're going to move on now, and we're not going to use a capo in this demonstration, just in case any of you guys don't have one yet. What we need to do is play each one of these chords for four bars. Now, we covered what a bar was in the previous lesson, which was four down strums played on the beat. So one bar of this A chord is written like this, the A chord with four strums, and the vertical lines represent a bar, and we play that A chord like this. One, two, three, four. Four even strums, and we want to try and miss out that thickest E string. To play four bars of A, we essentially strum 16 times, but we don't want to count to 16, we need to keep counting one, two, three, four, and we do that four times. So as a demonstration, first of all, one, two, three, four, second bar, two, three, four, third bar, two, three, four, fourth bar, two, three, four, and then stop, and this is where we would change to the new D chord, and that would complete this song. We would just do those two chords in a loop to play the rhythm guitar version of Born in the USA. We'll learn the recognizable hook of the song in one second. We're just covering the chords first. So we need this new D major chord. There's our new D. And again, four bars of D, four strums for each bar. So two, three, four as a demo. One, two, three, four. Second bar, two, three, four. Third bar, two, three, four. Fourth bar, two, three, four. And then we need to change back to the A. And as I say, we do that in a loop. And if you can keep that going for around a minute and keep the strumming hand even, you can play the rhythm part to Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. So let's have a play along together now, starting from the A chord and join in when we get to beat one. I'll count us in together. Get ready and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two. Third bar. Fourth bar then, change to the D. D, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three. Four, back to the A chord. One, two, three, four, two. And four, here we go, change chords. D, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, and four. And pause there. Now again, if this doesn't go as well as you hoped or you couldn't keep up with me, that's totally fine. That's what the practice time shortly after this video is all about. Mastering this chord change so that 
the change isn't slowing down your strumming hand. So that's totally fine if that's the case. We'll have one more playthrough now before we go along to uh, trying to play this, this little lead line. Um, but let's go again and I'll kind of sing along a little bit so you can get how the song would go. Start from the A chord and join in with me in two, three, four, one. Born in the USA, I was third by two, three, four, USA. Change chord to the D. Born in the USA, I was born in the USA. Back to the A chord. A. Born in the USA, I was A. Born in the USA, change to D. D. Born in the USA, I was born in the USA. And pause there. And that's how you play that song. So hopefully it sounded a little bit more like how you recognize Born in the USA would go, but the most recognizable bit of this song is the riff. Now that is very recognizable as the riff. Born in the USA. And we're going to learn how to play that now. So we start off, again, I'm using a pick, but you can play this with just your thumb or even just your first finger and pluck each of the strings, which would be something called finger style. And that's totally fine, but I'd recommend using a pick for now, just to start off with. So we pick the thinnest string once and let it ring out. Nice and easy. Then we ideally want to use our middle finger on the third fret of the second string here. And that's the second note. After that we go back to the open string. And when it's written above here in something called tab, that would be written zero on the thinnest string, three on the second thinnest string, and then zero again on the thinnest. If you need more help about reading tab, the link is in the description to a video where I'll explain exactly how to read all these numbers that are suddenly on lines and look very scary, okay? Totally fine. If you've never come across it before, you'll probably be able to follow me here. But if you'd like to learn how to read tab, that video is there for you. So as a recap, we've gone zero, three, zero, and the first one needs to ring out longer. Born in the... The other two are quicker. Fourth note, first finger on the second string just here. That would be U of USA. And then back to that second note for S. So U, S. And then nice and easy, open string finish. A. So we have six notes in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that can seem daunting at first, but if we put the lyrics to it, it does become an awful lot easier to get your head around. So we start off with born. Born. Thinnest string. In the... One more time with those three notes. Three, four. Born in the... U is second fret with your first finger. U. Middle finger third fret. S. A. Together again. Three, four. Born in the U. USA, born in the USA, born in the USA. And that repeats almost throughout the entire song. As I say, that sounds exactly like it on, when played on its own and you can practice it like that and it's entirely correct. However, so that you can do this along to the record and it sound correct to the original song, we need to place a capo at second fret 
like this. This is a certain type of, type of capo. There are many different ones available and the recommendations are in, in the description in the, in the video. But now we play everything proportion, proportionate to that second fret, so it sounds like this. This is now in the key of the original because we've hired the strings up. This basically, basically clamps the strings down at second fret. This becomes first fret, this becomes second fret, and this third. Born in the USA. And then our two chords. Born in the USA. I was born in the USA. I was. Those two chords are played like this, missing out this first fret and starting from the second fret, playing the A and the D like this. And that is the end of day two of this 10 day guitar starter course. Please do join me tomorrow for day three where we'll be covering another new song. And Hi guys, welcome to day three of my 10 day guitar starter course where we're checking out the easy three chord song Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. So we've already covered the chords needed to play this song, the E, the A chord and the D chord. If you haven't checked out those chords yet, please do check out day one or two of this course where we'll cover those chords in depth. And let's get straight in for a close up now for how to play Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. So the chorus of this song should be very easy for most of you guys watching this video. We want to change between the A chord and the D chord, so very similar to what we did in day two of this 10 day guitar starter course, we just have the E major chord in the verse, but the chorus, so this first chord sequence is two bars of the A chord, and if I just strummed on the beat that would go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, then we change to the D, and then back to a bar of A. So two A's, one bar of D, one bar of A. Just a demo first of all. Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright And that repeats twice and then we get on to a verse. Let's try with this one, because it is very similar to what we did in day two. Let's try doing something we call eighth strumming, and we're going to do this all with down strum. So essentially, for one bar, rather than strumming four times, we're going to strum eight and twice as fast. That looks like this. That's how we split the bar up now. One and two and three and four and. Because we have to, in music, we can't just count to eight. We have to always count to four and count the off beats as and. So one and two and three and four and. One bar of A would therefore sound like one and two. So because this should be fairly easy for you, let's go straight for this harder strumming, get stuck into this easy song. And if you want to play along with me, I will shout out the changes for you, but we're strumming it around this tempo. One and two and three and four and. So ready on our A chord everyone, let's give this a go in two and three and four. One and two and three and about a thing. Two. Change to the D, cause every little two and three back to an A chord. Two and three and four and. Let's have one more go at that same line, cause it happens twice for this chorus. Three and four, don't worry. Two and three and about a thing. And two and three and D, cause every little Back to an A, A and two and three and four and. Now we need that to happen twice straight away on the bounce. If the change was a little hard to you, just pause the video briefly to do some individual changes. Strumming the A chord, changing to the D. Give it a strum, change back to the A. 
If you're unfamiliar with this change, check out day two where I explain how to play these chords in depth and why we're playing this version of an A rather than the three in a line A that some of you may be more familiar with. The idea is this anchor finger basically. So let's go for this one more time. We're basically going for the same line again, but we're going straight for both lines. And I'll kind of sing the chorus so you get an idea of how it all fits together. Then we'll learn the verse. So same again. Two and three and four. Don't worry. Two and three. About a thing. And two and three. To a D chord. Every little thing. Back to an A chord there and two. We stay on the A. Don't worry, two and three and four a thing. And two and three, two a D, cause every little thing. Back to an A and two and three and four and. Perfect. That is how to play the chorus. We then have a verse, which is this next section I'm about to show you, and then we go back to a chorus. Typical song structure usually starts with a verse, then goes to chorus, verse, chorus, but this one starts straight away with the chorus, which is why we did that first. The verse, a little bit trickier, because we do also change to this E chord, but we're gonna start off with the A. I'll just give you a little demo of it first. Rise up this morning. Smile with the rising sun Three little A chords Then two a D chord So that's the first line. The second line is really similar, but we're going to change every chord here is for a bar A, E, A and D The way I kind of like to think about it with these chord sequences is A chord is kind of in the middle so then we come to the thicker strings, go back to the middle, and then to D, which is on the thinner strings for this one. So if you remember middle, thicker strings, middle, then high, it can be easier than trying to remember the letter names. Remember what your fingers are doing to remember a longer chord sequence and it helps you visualize it. So let's play this together. I'll shout out the chord sequence, but it's also on the screen for you if you need it. From the A chord, Straight for eighth strumming. I'm sure you can do this, guys. Keep keep going with me. Two and three and four and morning. Smile with the rising sun. Three and two and A. A chord two and three and then a D chord two and three and. Pause there. Let's go one more time for that one, guys. Really good if you've kept up with that, but let's do it one more time to make sure. In two and three and rise up this morning. E chord. E chord two and three and A chord there. And two and three on my doorstep. Two and three and four and... And then it's almost the same, but the D and the A chord are swapped around for the last two bars. So it's a bar of A, E, straight to a D chord, and then back to A. So it's just the last two chords swapped around. It's on the screen for you. Let's try and go for this straight away from the A chord, the second line. Three and four and. E chord, pure and true. D chord, bigger change. Let's give this a bit more time. There we go. D chord. This is a message to A chord. You. And then we would be straight into the chorus, but we're just going to go for that one one more time. So let's go for the whole thing, the whole verse. I'll shout out each chord as it comes to you, and we'll pause a little bit on the changes to make sure everyone can keep up. From the A chord, top of the verse, in two and three and rise up this morning, two and three and four, E chord, rising sun and three, three little A chord, A. then to a D, on my doorstep, two and three, 
back to an A chord, second line. Sweet song with melodies. E chord, pure and true. D chord this time, singing D. This is our message to A, A, and that's the end of our verse. So to have a full playthrough now, we want to play through the chorus, come to the verse, and then end on that chorus. And that is absolutely plenty for this song, but there is another couple of verses as well if you want to keep that pattern going. It's always the same, even if the lyrics change in a verse, it's the same chord sequence, so your count is the same. Let's have a playthrough then, full playthrough from the top now. I'll sing a little bit, but I'll also shout out the chords to make it easy for you. Join in with me from your A chord, straight into a chorus in one, two, three, and four. Don't worry, two, three. A bass stay on the A chord, then it's a D. Go, cause D chord, back to an A, A, two, three, start again, don't worry, second line, about a thing, two and three, to a D, cause every little thing, it's back to an A, back to an A, verse, rise up this morning, two, Smile, E chord, rising sun, three, A chord, birds, two and three, then to a D, D and two and three, singing, A chord, two and three, four, pure and true, three, D chord this time, bigger change, is our message to A chord, two. Three, chorus, chorus, don't worry, two and three, and about a thing, two, three, four, cause every little thing, three and four, and one, and two, and three, and they tell me don't worry, last line now, about a thing, two and three, and D, cause every little thing, gonna be all right two and three and four and so that's how to play three little birds and that is the end of this day three of this 10 day guitar starter course if you haven't checked out days one and two please do especially day two we've got a little melody with that one and i'll teach you how to play born in the usa by bruce springsteen but if you've already done those, you can practice this three little birds and then get straight on. Join me tomorrow for day four, where we'll be checking out an easy riff. Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to day four of this 10 day guitar starter course with me, Andy Crowley. Now in this lesson, we're checking out a very recognizable riff that's just played using the chords E, A and D major. Now we've all heard of the term guitar riff before, but it can happen that people don't actually know what it refers to. Now a guitar riff is the short recognizable part of any particular song. And it has to be short, it has to be repetitive, so it has to be the same thing that repeats over and over, and it's also instantly recognizable as that song. This one is Wild Thing, originally done by the Trogs, and it just has these three chords in it, and let me give you a quick demonstration now of what we're gonna be going for in day four of this course. Now most people watching this video should recognize that as Wild Thing. And uh, I'm not gonna say everyone because there's always someone that doesn't recognize a certain song, but most people will. And if you don't know it, other people will definitely recognize it if you play it. And that can be a fantastic asset to have, especially in your early days of playing guitar, when you really want things to sound exactly like the record and sometimes it doesn't, or sometimes we play simplified versions of songs. It's great when this sounds absolutely like the record. Let's get in for a close up and now and learn this easy song. So to play Wild Thing we start off in an A major chord and we're gonna play in this fashion 
incongruence with the rest of the course. If you're not familiar with this A chord and you're more familiar with this way of playing in A or any other way, you can use that, but I advise this one because this riff is constantly changing chord from the A to the E and the D chord and we want to make that change as good as possible and that's the idea of this finger staying down, this anchor finger that we have between all these chords which never quite lifts off, it just slides. So we're going to start off on an A chord and we're going to strum twice. That's twice on the beat, so join in with me now. Three, four, one, two. Be careful not to pick the thickest string, but we can have our thumb on top like this. So this sound is made when we just pick that string, we're not pressing down and gaining out. We're just muting that string with our thumb. So then I can strum all the strings and that thickest string is not heard. A very handy skill. So we strum twice, then we change to the D after a slight pause and we strum twice but quicker on two down strums. So A, A, D, D. One, two, three and four is the rhythm of it. One, two, three and four. Now to make that change smoother, we can mute by laying our hand over the strings at the sound hole like this. And that will really clean up the sound and make this riff sound a lot better. But it will sound like Wild Thing, even without that muting, it'll just sound a lot cleaner with it. So after that change, A, A, D, D. We then do the biggest and hardest change to the E chord from the D, the hardest change that we've done so far. Then we strum E on the beat, one, two, and then we go back to the D again. So A, D, E, and back to D, and that's the whole thing, that is just what we repeat. Just let me have one slow demo before we play it together. Hopefully very recognisable for you guys. Let's have a go at playing it together really, really slowly. Play along with me, starting from the A chord in two, three, four. To the D and then to the E. One, two, back to a D and four. Let's give it another go really slow in two, three, four. Mute, D, D, to the E, E chord, 3, D, D. This time we're going to try this riff in a loop. Let's try and play it four times. Remember with these guitar riffs, they have to repeat, otherwise it's not a riff. It has to repeat exactly uh, for it to sound correct and sound and be the song that we're going for. So one more time but we're going to cycle this whole riff four times from the A chord in two, three, four. A, A, three, and four. E, B e to the D, D, D. From the top again. A, A, D, D. E, E, D, D. A, A, D, D. E, E, D, D. And that's our riff, okay? Couple of tips, remember we had this thumb just creeping over the top and taking out, muting this thickest string. That thumb wants to be in the same place on the D chord, but it needs to lift higher on the E because it's all six strings that we want ringing out on the E chord, but when we're on a D chord, we ideally want the thinnest four, but it's okay if we just catch that A. It's not going to sound bad, but it sounds really bad if that thickest E string is um, ringing out on a D chord. We don't want that. 
Also, especially when changing back from the E chord, we want to make sure that all our fingers are as far this way as we, they can on the fret, not in the middle, they want to be right over here, and as much on the tips of your fingers, so curling over this first uh, knuckle or sort of uh, joint in our fingers, curl those right over, and they will ring out. If they're too flat, they will not ring out, and all our chords will sound a bit a bit flat and not quite ringing out. The correct way, right on the tips, really right on the tips. And that is our riff. When the song first starts, the first riff that you hear in the Trogs version actually stays on the E a little bit longer. So the first round of the riff is the intro and that goes like this. A, D, D, E, 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 And then they start singing Wild thing Do, 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 do You make my heart sing So it's just on that first attempt that we need to play A, A, D, D, E, 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 I think that's six times One, two, three, four, five, six Yes, six times One, two, three, four, five, six A, A D, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that happens just on the first repetition as an intro, and then it's the normal riff that we've learnt until you make everything groovy. Till the lyrics say those words. You make everything groovy. And then we have Wild Thing. Wild thing, I think I love you. We have that section, which is, I'd count it as a middle eight. It's in the middle of the song, and it's longer than eight bars, but it's kind of this, this middle section, uh, and, and a little part, where we're gonna play this little riff. Now this is where we're gonna be playing the more advanced A chord, three in a line, which you may find easier to do, but it is harder to change between the chords for the, with this A, that's why I'm saying it's more advanced. But what we're gonna do here is a thing that guitar riffs do, which is maybe something that's a little unconventional, something, you know, not playing a chord the standard way. This is what happens in real songs. And for this one, we're just gonna lift off of the uh, of the A chord, have all open strings and strum the middle four strings. One, two, three, four, and then we strum those same strings, and that's how we play those four notes. One, two, three, four. Wild thing, I think I love you, but I wanna know for sure. That section, okay? We have four strums, one, two, three, four, and we have four of those. Four of, four of that whole thing. So let's try and do that together. In one, two, three, open, down, open, down. Wild thing, I think I love you. Again, strum, open, down, open, down. But I wanna know for sure. Open, down, open, down. So come on and hold me tight. Last time. And then we go back into the main riff, which we need to go back to that other way of playing an A. And if you want to play along with me and play this riff as you remember it, let's give it a go. Two, three, four. D, D, E, E, D, D, wild thing. D, D, E, E, you make my A. D, D, E, E, you make everything groovy, so one more time, wild thing, and then one, two, three, four, I'll do that one more time, one, two, three, four, open A, open A, wild thing, I think I love you, but I want to know for sure. Open A, open A. You can keep your thumb here the whole time because we don't ever want this one ringing out. And it sounds a lot better if we don't play that thinnest string. It sounds a bit heavier, a bit more rocky. 
So that's how to play Wild Thing by the Trogs. If you'd like a longer chord sheet to be able to follow and know where you are in this song,、uh, the link is in the description and in the top corner for the chord sheet for this day four song of this ten day guitar course. But that's the end of today. So what you need to do now is stop this video and have a practice of Wild Thing. For around ten minutes, along with the、uh, the other songs that we've learned in the previous days, give them a quick play through, and you'll be. Hi guys, I'm Andy Crowley. Welcome to day five of this ten day guitar starter course, where we're going to be looking at a new strumming pattern and a little melody for one of the great songs that are fantastic for beginners. It's just got two chords in it, and this is Ooh La La by The Faces. You may not be aware of it, so I'll just give you a little playthrough of the two parts that we're going to go for. But I think you're really going to like it. Younger, I wish that I knew what I know now. When I was stronger. So that's the chorus, and that's the little rhythm part, and then we have this lead part. That can be played just with your first two fingers. So absolutely fantastic for beginners. So those two chords I just played were a D major, played from string four, and an E minor, which is played like this. So E minor is essentially just an E major chord, but we take off your first finger, and it's just those two notes there. But it can be easier to play that with your first two fingers. So that was the E minor I played before, E major, with our first finger off. But it can be easier just to use your first two like this. And the strumming pattern that I used was playing the root note, so the lowest note of the chord, otherwise known as the bass note,、um, and then strumming, which I kind of nicknamed Bob Dylan style folk strumming. So that's root note, the D, and then strumming the thinnest four strings, and we do that、um, four times of each. So it's two bars: one, two, three, four; one, two, three, four, and then change to the E minor, where the root note is now on the thickest E string: one, two, three, four; one, two, three, four, and that just repeats for the whole song. So one, two. Do 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 do. So let me give you some tips and help you play this bit first, and then we'll play that melody towards the end of this video. The quick links are in the description below if you want to skip to the single note part. So here's our D chord played one. Two, three, standard D major. Fingers on an angle, pointing towards your strumming hand, kind of shoulder, and then we pick the root note and strum, and that's one, two, three, four. When you're doing the single string pick, you want to make it just a wrist motion, so just moving the wrist and keeping the forearm still, and for the strum. Just kind of flick everything away. So flick downwards, slight movement of the arm, but still the movement is at the wrist as well. So just to focus on the strumming action, pick just the wrist, strum, just kind of let it flow down, but as small a movement as possible. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And staying on those thinner strings will really help to get this sound. I'm using a pick and picking string four. Strum, four, strum, one, two, three, four, and then we change to the E minor chord, and we then pick the thickest string, and strum, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's have a play of this together. If you can't keep up with me with the single note, 
Just go for a normal strum every time. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Change chord there. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it should be nice and straightforward, this one. Everyone should be able to do this, even if it's one of your first ever songs. But try this Bob Dylan style folky pattern if you're up to it. So let's play that together now really slow in two, three, four. Root note, strum. Three, four. One, two, three, four. E minor, thickest string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the D chord. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. E minor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's repeat that really slowly and I will sing the words just so that you get how the verse and the chorus work together. Exactly the same chord sequence and then you'll be away to practice this straight after this video. Let's play together in one, two, three, four. One, two, change chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, change to D. D, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we start the verse. Poor old granddad E minor. I laughed at all his words. D, I thought he was bitter man he spoke of women's ways keep it going back to the d the trap you then they use you e minor before you even know d is blind far too kind don't ever let it show chorus same thing d chord i wish that i knew what i know now when I was younger, I wish that I knew what I know now. When I was stronger, and pause there. From there, it is just a loop from exactly what you've done. So if you could keep up with that fantastic job, if you couldn't, pause this video now, have a quick practice, then rewind and have another go along to me. But we're going to move straight on now and move uh, onto the lead line, which kind of follows the, uh, the chorus pattern, at least in a rhythm point of view. Wish that I knew what I know now When I was younger so for this little lead line, we're going to start with our first finger where it normally is on the D major chord and pick that note, which is the third string, second fret, represented as two in the tab above. And then we play that note three times. One, two, three. After the third time, one, two, three, four. We go with our middle finger to fourth fret and we're going to try and play this whole thing just with our first two fingers, okay, to make it even easier. We're going to go with your middle finger to fourth fret of that same string. One, two, three, four. And remember when you're placing your finger at any fret, it wants to be at this side of the fret area, not at this side or in the middle. We want it right up there and the middle finger right over here, not in the middle, still staying right on the tips of our fingers, staying like this, rather than being really flat. We're not holding a guitar, we're playing notes, so we need to bend that first knuckle like this. Again, one, two, three, four. Then we go back, the fifth note is the same note we started with. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Let me move my pick into shot so you can see it. Two, three, four, five. Then we go fourth fret, but this time on the fourth string. So on the thicker string. And then to the open. One, two, three, four, five, four. 
zero, four, zero on the D string on the fourth string, this one here. If you want to play it along with me, join in. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Da -da. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fourth fret to zero. To end that little section, it's a two. Second fret of that same D string. Those last three notes. One, two, three, one, open string, second fret. From the top, three, four. Three, four. And that's certainly the main part. That should be recognisable if you listen to the song as that particular song. This is what a riff or a lead line does. It makes a song recognisable. A little bit slower. Three, four. And then the last part of this riff, middle finger, uh, fifth fret this time. So this on mine, I've got two dots, and this second dot is the fifth fret. One, two, three, four, five. At the fourth string. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, one. At fifth fret, fourth fret, and second fret. One, two, three, one, two, one. So there's a little bit of sliding goes happens here. Two, three, to first finger. One, two, one. Now there, when I'm sliding from, uh, well, when I'm moving from fourth fret to second fret, I never lift off the string, but I do lift off the fretboard. So I'm sliding along the string, but I'm not squeezing. You can see my thumbs over the top. We slide and then press down again. Press here, slide, relax, press down, but never letting go of the string. One, two, three, one, two, one. So from the top, this would be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. Really slowly now, last time, let's play this together. Give this a really good go, guys. This is towards the end of the video. This is the last thing. We can do this. From that first finger where it would be on a D chord, here we go. In, two, three, four. End part. One, two, three, one, two, one. And again, three, four. Stretch-wise, if your fingers are on an angle, it will be easier. Or you can go with your third finger for these notes. For any of those higher ones, if you prefer. But we always want to start on first finger at that second fret. Very last time, guys. Here we go. One more time. We'll do the riff twice. In two, three. And there's our song. So that lead line goes over the rhythm part that you've just learnt. Two, three, four. 
To copy the rhythm part exactly as I did in the intro, we do up, down, up at the end. So pick, strum, pick, strum. One, two, three, up, down, up. Now that does make it much more difficult because that's where we change chord. So I'm not expecting everyone to be able to do that, but if you needed an explanation of it and a demo, here it is one last time, really slow. Three, four. The best thing to notice on that one is it's on the last upstroke that I lift off to change chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, up, down, up is where we change chord. That's a little chord changing trick for you. Up, down, up. It's on the last upstroke that you lift off your chord and that means we're there we can arrive on the next chord, your fingers are down for beat one. That's absolutely the most important thing when changing chords in rhythm guitar. If there's an upstrum on the last uh, beat of the bar, so on four and, or even later than that, make sure you're lifting off your chord for that last strum, and it's the coordination of that that will improve your chord changes. And that is the end of day six. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, the idea now is that you'll practice this for a further 10 minutes, along with the other songs that you've done over the last days and the last few days following these videos. And then join me tomorrow for day six, when we're going to be looking at some minor chords and some finger style picking in another song. So it's going to be without a pick the next lesson tomorrow. So it's going to be really great for a lot of you guys Wanting to, uh, wanting to learn acoustic guitar, play some more intricate stuff with your right hand, but still great for beginners. And I hope to see you there. Please subscribe if you're enjoying this course so far and wanna check out the rest of my videos. The link is down below in the description and on the screen now. Uh, hopefully I'll see you again in one of my videos. Take care of yourselves guys and bye for now.